In part one of this lesson, I'll show you three examples on how to use molarity in calculations. Question one reads, how many liters of 0.125 molar of sodium hydroxide solution contain 0.22 moles of sodium hydroxide? Keep in mind what molar is. Molar is a rate of moles per liter. So molarity, which can also be represented by the letter C, is measured in moles per liter. That being said, we're told that there is 0 0.125 moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. To get to this, you take the number of moles and you divide it by the volume. We have the number of moles, it's 0 0.255. So I'm gonna replace this with 0 0.255 and so my calculation has become 0 0.125 is equal to 0 0.255 over V. All I have to do now is solve for V and I'm done. This requires a little bit of algebra. What we do is we multiply both sides by V. That cancels it out on the right side. And what you do on the right side, you have to do on the other side. So V times 0 0.125 is equal to 0 0.255. Now dividing both sides by 0 0.125 gives us our volume in liters. Now, of course, a lot of you are introduced to small triangles that will help you with calculations. So if you have a triangle that will help you with this calculation, feel free to use it. 0 0.255 over 0 0.125 gives us 2.04 liters. So how many liters? 2.04 liters. Take a look, we have three significant figures here, three here, and so does our answer. Question two asks, how many grams of sucrose are in 1.55 liters of 0 0.758 molar of sucrose solution? What we have to do is two things here. One, find the number of moles represented by this molarity, and then use those moles alongside the molar mass of one sucrose molecule to find the grams. Here's what I mean. First, my formula for molar is N over V, where N represents the number of moles, V represents the volume in liters, and M represents the concentration, the molarity. I'm gonna find N first. So I have 0 0.758 is equal to N over 1.55. To find the number of moles, all we do is multiply V with M. So M times V is equal to N, 0 0.758 times 1.55 is equal to N, using my calculator, 0 0.758 times 1.55 gives me 1.1749, 1 1.1749 moles. Everything after the seven is insignificant, although I'll keep these numbers while I calculate for what I'm looking for, which is grams, and then at the very end, I'll round. Now I need to find the molar mass of sucrose, and to do this, I'll take the molar mass of one individual carbon atom, which I know happens to be 12.01 grams per mole. I'll multiply this by 12, plus the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. Mind you, all of these numbers can be found in your periodic table plus 16.00 times 11, which is the number of oxygen atoms within one molecule. Using my calculator, I have 12.01 times 12 plus 1.01 times 22 plus 16.00 times 11. That gives me a molar mass of 342.34. 342.34. Three hundred and forty-two decimal three four grams per mole. So what I'll do is take this number and multiply it by three four two decimal three four grams per every one mole. And notice what this will do. The mole units here and the mole units here will cancel out, leaving us with only grams. So taking my number and multiplying it by one decimal one seven four nine, this gives us four hundred and two. Everything after this first two is insignificant. 402 grams of sucrose are found in the solution. Finally, in question three, we were asked how many milliliters of 0 0.155 molar of KCl potassium chloride solution contains 1.22 grams of KCl. This is kind of the opposite of question number two. So first we need to find the molar mass of KCl. 
The molar mass of potassium is 39.09. That's for potassium. And the molar mass for chlorine, according to the periodic table, is 35.45. So adding these numbers up, let's use our calculator. 39.09 plus 35.45. This gives us 74.54. 74.54 grams per mole. Now using this number and 2.55, we can find the number of moles. So let's go ahead and find the number of moles. We will take 2.55 grams and multiply it by the flipped version of this. Now of course a lot of you are probably using triangles like I mentioned in question one. In case you don't have that method, you can use simple algebra. If I flip this and I end up with one mole at the top and 74.54 grams at the bottom, you'll notice that the gram units will cancel out, leaving you only with moles. So our mole count here is 2.55 divided by 74.54. This gives us 0 0.0342. 0 0.0342 moles. Now using this and using the fact that we have 0 0.155 molar as given in the question, I can now set up a simple equation where I have the number of moles at the top, which is 0 0.342 moles over the volume at the bottom. To find the volume in liters, what I will do is take this number and divide it by this number. And it's the exact same calculation as in one, where I multiplied both sides by V and then divided both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 0 0.0342 divided by 0 0.155. This gives us a volume of 0 0.2212. V is equal to 0 0.2212. That's in liters. They want it in milliliters. To go from liters to milliliters, you will multiply by 1,000. That's the conversion ratio. Multiplying this by 1,000, we end up with 2 to 1 milliliters. Notice that this 2 is discarded because we started with three significant figures and we should end with three. And there you have it. That is how to use molarity in calculations.